Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 14 of our FTP Skies Expert Mode Let's Play. Today guys, I really want to get to space. Now it might seem ambitious, however, oh, I do have a few things pinned there. However, realistically, all we have to do is complete these few quests right here. I've done a bit of off-camera work, just a bit, not too much, nothing too major. However, I have prepared a lot of the materials we'll need to make our spaceship today. Today. And those are over in this chest here. Now, last episode, you saw I set up automatic steel. So I went ahead and made a bunch of steel plates. Also went ahead and made a bunch of aluminum and copper plates and turned steel plates also into steel sheet metal, which is just four steel plates for sheet metal. Now this is used to make space plating. And if my math was correct, which it might not have been, it is very late at night. However, if my math is correct, this is exactly how many we'll need, roughly. I think we'll have a few extra space plating. However, this should be the exact amount or roughly the exact amount of materials we need to make our space plating blocks. Now, to do this, we actually need to throw this stuff here in a pressure chamber, not the sheet metal, but the plates themselves. So while we do things in this episode, what I'm going to do is come down here. I've set back up my pressure chamber. I only did a four by four. I don't know why I only did a four by four. I think it kind of fits. Maybe that's, yeah, that's probably why it's because it fits so it fits nicely in there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to throw all of these in and also want this on round robin round robin on there we go and this should only be expert and crafted and eventually this guy will fill up yeah and i have speed upgrades in these by the way so they lose less pressure so both the input and the output here have five speed upgrades each this will mean that when this opens it'll instantly open watch so it opens gone closed it closes immediately and that is so you lose a minimum amount of pressure right see so your pressure went down and it's climbing back up again so that is so you lose a minimal amount of pressure otherwise well your pressure will drop and then you won't be able to craft for a long time and it's it's just not ideal to have so i went ahead and i'm just going to keep crafting these as the episode goes along so that we have them by the end when we have to make our spaceship also a few more things i did is i went ahead and crafted up oh i already brought them upstairs I went ahead and crafted up 20 more PCBs with our fluid encapsulator here. We don't have any more destabilized redstone. I used it all up on logic circuits. And another thing is, is I grabbed my mineral tank from here. So remember we have the mineral tank making silver since we're going to space hopefully. And I did make, I think 350 silver with our, what is it? Our, our crush over here, right? Since he makes 3x the silver, I, we should have a plenty of silver, right? I have 133. Well, I had a lot more in my head. Also, I went ahead and added, I know I'm jumping around here, but I went ahead and added silver ore and silver blocks, like the silver preset in here. Also, our diamonds and emeralds. And that is in preparation for the fact that we're going to have dash infused meshes by next episode, hopefully, because obviously this episode we're actually going to get to space. Next episode, we'll be on the moon. That is my goal. Now, to get started with all that, the first thing we actually have to do is make the assembly line from pneumatic craft and this stuff is pretty easy however it does require all the pcbs so if you remember the pcbs were the etching tank and all this and then we use the capacitors and transistors we got from our trading villagers however you can make them inside the pressure chamber if like now we need two lasers two drills and then one platform one export one import in one controller now the reason you need two lasers and two drills is because you need a laser and a drill for the nasa workbench itself so to make your a rocket ship you need the nasa workbench to craft it and you also need laser and the drill for your assembly line for other items in the future so what you have to do is you just make two of these and then one of each of these guys here so i should have everything i need crafted up that should be enough solenoids so we'll craft two of those we'll craft two of these is that the, okay that is the right one just make sure we'll get one of you oh we don't have a brass hand we'll get an export unit oh we are out of solenoids already we'll need more cylinders and I should have plenty of plastic. That's not an issue. Well, it shouldn't be an issue at least. <laughs> oh, we don't have a hopper, really. That's crazy. Grab a few of those. One import. And then our controller, which needs something else. An information screen, which needs a machine base. Interesting. And that's our controller. 
So that is everything we need. And that also means we can go ahead and make our workbenches as well. We don't want to make two of them. That would be a waste. And this guy doesn't need power, so you can actually just plop this down anywhere. We're going to put it right here for now. It's actually really cool. I do like the Ad Astro workbench. And as you see, you make your rocket in here. So that is all of that done. I did make two basic tier installers. Now you may be wondering, well, how'd you get basic control circuits? Well, like I was saying earlier, that's why I moved my mineral resin. It's because if you do mineral resin on top of a logic circuit and logic circuits are the same thing you make PCBs with. So we had a few left over because I ran out of destabilized redstone. I was going to make a lot more PCBs. So I made another fluid encapsulator and I have my mineral resin right here and I would just made some up and that is so I could turn my infusing factories into basic infusing factories. And what this does, it opens up three slots per item, which means if you put auto sort on, it'll make three at a time and that'll make three over here and then three over here. So it sped up our steel production threefold. And for doing that, that what I realized, and I didn't know about this, is if we go to the mechanism quest, doing this gets you a infused alloy. No, where is it? There's a quest in here that gives you speed upgrades. Oh, it's just for making the metallurgic infuser. So for make making the metallurgic infuser, you get two speed and two energy upgrades. So I threw one speed and one energy in each one of these. So that also sped up our production. So I think it's like 3, point, like 3 or 3.4 times faster than it was previously. So yeah, I, I definitely highly recommend doing this if you have a similar setup or if you've set this up exactly exactly like I've shown here, I recommend getting these two infusing factories immediately and then obviously upgrading them as it goes on until you get to the ultimate tier infusing factory, which is with these guys here. Because remember, if you remember from last episode, we got these from Loopies. However, you do need each tier before it to actually get to that. So you can't just go from no infusing factory to the ultimate tier right off the bat. However, I've been rambling long enough. I do need to get started with this episode. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some more of these down in our pressure chamber. It should be done by now, right? Yeah, okay. That's done. So we'll go ahead and throw some more in there. I just don't want to overfill it because what will happen is if I overfill with too many items, we'll have a mismatch of say aluminum, copper, and steel, and it won't be able to craft. So this has to come back up to pressure, which you'll do slowly and we'll slowly make our space plate through there. However, I have to set up the assembly line, which means I need some pressure tubes, and then we'll head right back down there. If you've never used Pneumatic Craft before or the assembly controller, this is pretty much a basic setup for it. You need the assembly controller to be provided with pressure. However, that is the only block in the line you need pressure to be put and put into. The import and output upgrades need, or sorry, the import and export upgrades need a connected inventory, which means just an inventory right beside it. So the import will pull from this barrel, it'll put into this middle machine here into the assembly platform either the laser or the drill will work on it and then this export will pull it off and throw it into its connected inventory i'll show you how this works once we have it set up for space plating however we do need a program to make it and the program to make it is the laser program so you need the laser drill which is just a logic circuit a rubber sheet and a laser cell inside of the engineer's blueprint engineering workbench sorry so we will have to make that if we come over here you see the programs down here so we'll throw the laser cell, a latex rubber sheet, and a logic circuit, and we'll get ourselves the program. Now, if I come down here, I should grab some speed upgrades. If I have some, I do, I have plenty. So I'll grab eight, eight should be fine. Shouldn't need any more than that. And this should have made plenty of space material. So we'll grab that, we'll come around back here, and if we throw it inside of our import, so the import chest is here, I'll throw the speed upgrades in there, and I'll throw the laser program in there, and it says no problems, all is good. And we'll throw this in here and we'll watch. It'll grab some. The laser will etch. This guy is keeping up with pressure, not too bad. And it'll take it out and place it in this barrel. And that cycle will continue for, well, as long as this has pressure. We won't ever have to worry about it. And what I'll do is I will, like I said, I need to put a door right here. There we go. <laughs> that is not safe. And like I said, I will keep adding our copper plating and such into that chest so that we can just make it as we do everything else we need to in this episode. So I'm over here at our miniaturization crafters that we set up last episode, and I've thrown down my schematic cannon. Now the reason is, is the pack devs have actually added in everything that is craftable with this guy in here, which is actually super nice of them. So you don't actually have to follow the recipes and craft it yourself. It is all done inside of here. So you have the rocket fins, the nose, the steel engine, and the steel tank. So that's super cool. You also have the fabrication matrixes and all the custom multi-blocks that they made, which is cool as well. 
However, the one thing they didn't add is the oxygen loader from Ad Astra. And that is because you can craft it with dash plates once you get to the moon. However, the initial craft you have to use is the miniaturization crafter here, which is just engineering blocks, medium fluid tanks, which is pretty simple to make. And where is it? Some more engineering blocks, hardened glass, copper coils, and a radiator block. So I have all that stuff here. I thought I could craft it with this guy, but it doesn't seem to be in here unless I was missing it, but I don't think I am. However, once we do all the rocket pieces, we will use this to do so. But for now, if we come in the middle block, so if you look in the direct middle, stand in this block and use that as your center, you can go ahead and craft this guy. So if we look at the single layer, it is eight of the heavy engineer blocks surrounded by one of these. Then above that, it is copper coil, hardened glass, tanks, and then the light engineering blocks. So this is in directional, so you can do it in either order you want. And by process of elimination, radiator block in the middle, and then engineering blocks like so, I assume. And to craft this, you just need to throw a space plating into the middle of the craft. So if we come down here to our pressure chamber, and we should have plenty of space plating, yes we do. If I go back up, and all you have to do is chuck one in the middle, like so. And as you see, as soon as you chuck it into the orange square, it will start to craft. And the item looks like it disappears, however, it will appear in just a second here. There we go. And we got ourselves our oxygen loader. Now this guy is pretty simple to use. It just requires power and water. So if I chuck it directly on here, and if I do maybe just a pipe on the side, should be fine. And with a the pipe there, when I'll start to make oxygen. So just like I said, just requires water and power, and it will make oxygen. And this oxygen will be used to fuel your oxygen tanks so that you can actually breathe in space. Now to do so, we need space armor or i guess spacesuit would be the more common term so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to mark all of these and if you remember last episode we made all of our protective fabric with our polyethylene and latex crafting so i should be fine to make everything here except the chest plate for right now as that requires two more things we haven't made yet so it requires some oxygen tanks, which we will need several of, and an oxygen gear. And these are pretty simple. They're just iron and steel. However, I don't have any iron rods. So what I'll do is I'll grab my rod gear, throw it in our server press, and let this guy make some rods. And then we'll go ahead and craft the rest of it up. So that's our oxygen gear there. And then we need two oxygen tanks, which is just a bunch of steel plates of which I seemingly had ran out of, so I went to go grab some more. And we'll grab ourselves a few oxygen tanks, can't hurt. And we should be able to craft this guy as well. And we have our full spacesuit done. Now, we'll go ahead and throw this on, just because we will need it. And, not gonna lie, we look pretty cool in our spacesuit. Now that we have our spacesuit, if you look in the top left corner, you'll see that we have 0% oxygen. So to fix that, what you have to do is you throw your oxygen tank into this corner right here. So this guy right here. And if you drink these, now that they're full of oxygen, I'll fill up my oxygen tank. And these are basically just portable oxygen cells you take with you to fill up your oxygen, which is stored in your spacesuit here. However, I believe they give you one for your quest. If I look down in the Ad Astra one down here, they might give you, oh no, they just give you a full one. Interesting. I thought they gave you, hmm, yeah, I'm not sure. I thought they gave you a better oxygen tank. Maybe I'm misremembering. However, you do get a better oxygen tank. Oh, you can make a better oxygen tank. And what this will do is this will fill 500. Like, you won't have to consume it. You put it in a curio slot right here on your back or whatever, and it will just fill your oxygen as you lose it so you don't actually have to consume it. It is just a way to use the Curios tank, and then you can make it into a netherite one once you get Ostrom, which is Mars. So once you get to Mars, you can make a netherite one, and that holds a thousand oxygen. So you can stay in space for longer, and you know, I believe you can have multiple of these, as these are technically all curio slots. So you can fill up, like, I don't know, half these ring slots and half the charm slots, or all of them, with netherite oxygen tanks eventually, and you'll have plenty of oxygen to last you while you're doing space adventures. However, not our concern at the moment we do have our oxygen and we do want to make up the rest of these space platings so we'll be able to get to our spaceship while all of our space plating is cooking up i have gone ahead and moved our polyethylene drawer up here and i just threw a pusher upgrade in it to push down into this spout down here 
and I set up a deployer with a start of our space plating, just a hopper deployer, same as before, and then a press at the back here. And this will have to go through four times the recursive crafting. So we've done these before. It is space plating, polyethylene, and then a press with a sheet metal block. So we'll throw our sheet metal in there once we're ready. However, not all of our space plating is done yet. So once that is done, I'll throw it all in there and we'll start making all the space plating blocks. However, in the meantime, I may as well go craft up all of these things that are needed to make the small little parts throughout. So like the engineering blocks, the radiator blocks, this compressed air engine, which is, okay, that's pretty easy. Just an engine rotor, which is the turbine blades we've made before, redstone and gold. So yeah, all these things should be pretty easy. And then that's just steel blocks. Yeah. So I'm just going to go craft all that up. I'll throw it inside of our chest over here beside of the schematic cannon and we'll just have everything prepared so once we get the space plating we can get ourselves into space right away. I went ahead and threw all the things we'll need for the machines over here in our schematic cannon chest. However, some of these are excess, like these are just all the engineering blocks I had in our system and just a stack part in glass. It was easier to do that. These aren't the exact numbers. However, one more thing we will need to get into space is the actual launch pad itself. Now, if these guys are done, if we look in the window, yep, these are all done. So I'll throw all of this into our pressure chamber here, sorry. And this is just earth essence, fire essence, some reinforced bricks, 32 steel rods and 16 sturdy sheets. So that is that. And I can go ahead and throw the more space plate into there, which means more space plating. And since the rest of that space plate is going to take a while, it's still like six stacks to process from our assembly laser. We're going to be here waiting for a while. So we should get everything else done in the quest line. And that is the next thing we need is a fuel refinery, which is weird because this isn't how we're going to make fuel just yet because we don't actually have oil yet. So the fuel refinery is kind of useless. However, I will make it for the quest itself. And then once we make the tier one rocket in the launch pad, we will get free fuel buckets. So that's nice. However, there is one small thing I want to do. I believe I might have some. Yes, I do have a stabilized warp scroll. And to make these, it is blaze powder and ender pearls around a warp scroll. So I'm going to make some more because these are very, very useful. If you've never used a stabilized warp scroll before, all you have to do is shift right click an area. So if I go, I don't know, I want to teleport right here, okay? So if I come over here and I right click, it will build a portal for no mana or no source cost whatsoever and no TP me over. Now this is a temporary portal. You can go through it a few times and then it will eventually disappear or you can just break one block and the entire thing will break like so. But you won't get the source stone. Like it's just a void blocks, right? But they will disappear. And if you want to change the location, all you have to do is recraft it and then it will disappear and you can right click them again. Now, the reason I actually want to go and do this is so I can store locations around the like the around the planets so you don't have to travel to them each time. Now, the first one we're going to use it for is the moon. So we'll have one for the moon. However, I do want one for each planet as well as orbit. And these will also be helpful for locations both in the nether and far out in other dimensions or even in this dimension to get to, say, I don't know if I wanted to go back to a village like way over here, right? That's it's just very useful for that. So we'll use our stabilized warp pearls for that. So I'm going to go ahead and make five more of those, which should be very useful. And that is our warp scrolls done. So like I said, these are going to be our mode of transport around the galaxies once we get to the village, like once we land on the planets, obviously. So I've gone ahead and stored all my warp scrolls inside of my ender pouch here, which is set to white, blue, white. So it doesn't interfere with my white, white, white down there to import items into my system. And what I'll do is I'll set one for orbit, the moon, Mars, Venus, Glacio, and maybe I need another one. I'm not entirely sure what other planets will have requirements to go back to maybe in the future. However, this should be enough for now. And if I need more, I can trade more from my villager over there and then make them into stabilized warp scrolls in the future. However, this can also be used in actual portal frames. So if you remember, if I right click this down and go over here, it will build the portal and I can travel. However, you can build this portal yourself. So if I build source stone in this circle and through my stabilized warp scroll inside of it, it would create a portal that is permanent at that location. It will require source to create the portal 
but you will lose your warp scroll. Like the warp scroll will disappear, but the portal will remain permanently. And you can travel back and forth through that as much as you'd want. However, do you know what? I should actually set one at my house here. Because technically, F2B homes are supposed to be disabled as far as I know through the pack. So I'm not going to abuse them. But I will use our warp scrolls to maneuver around. And I won't use the slash home command anymore. So that is a way if you're on a server especially that has slash home disabled. Or if you're on a single player world and you want to feel like you're actually using the pack to its fullest. Make some stabilized warp scrolls. These will help you get around to all the galaxies or all the planets, as well as back to your base from wherever you're too far away. And all of my space plating should have cooked up. Yep, there we go. So I can go ahead and we can start making our space blocks, which means we can get to space finally. It feels like it's been dragging on so long, but if I throw space plating in here, and I take one of these off and I should be able to set this so that only incomplete space blocks come out next. However, I do need to get all the sheet metal out first and then I will set the filter on here so that only incomplete ones get taken out. And once that's done, oh man, I love watching these create machines just function in symmetry. Just boop, boop, boop. And these will go around four times. Now there are a lot of sheet metal blocks to actually go through. So this will take quite a while, but we'll set a filter on this guy to not allow, or we'll only allow incomplete space blocks to go through. However, I gotta let the last stack of sheet metal actually come out onto the belt. So it has to take 23 more. And then we'll put the incomplete space metal block on this filter right here on the front. And it won't take out anything else once it's done. And back here is just two andesite bundles. So there's no filtering going on back there. I'm just going to remove these for now. I will set the cake factory back up in the future. However, for now, we don't have lumium. So we can't actually make a proper pyrolyzing farm for four gems. Obviously, you can do it other ways with create farms. I just want to do it right from the start. Like my sort, not right. They're all right ways to do it. I just want to do it my the best way from the start. And that is definitely with uh, Lumium. So what I'll do is I'll set this to only allow those to come out. And I'll let this run in the background. I should have plenty enough polyethylene. And I definitely have enough space plate and blocks. This will run. And once it's all done, we can actually craft our space blocks and make our rocket. And the only thing I'll need is steel blocks and engineering blocks once I have it all crafted up. So that's pretty simple. And our launch pad should actually be done. So if I come down here, grab the launch pad. Oh, this is quite the interesting way to hold it. However, I can throw that down right there. And it does ask you to make a fuel loader. Yeah, it has you to make a fuel loader, which is funny because you don't actually need one of these at all. You can just fuel the rocket manually. And it also wants you to make fuel. So to finish chapter two, yeah, it does want you to actually make the fuel. So we'll, well, I'll show you, I'll, I'll, we'll go through the, okay, now with the launch pad down, we do need to fuel our rocket. So what we need to do is make a source condenser next. And I think these should be very easy to make. I think it's probably just glass and some source gems, that is, and maybe some gold plating. Okay, so it's a fluid containment jar and a source relay. And these are water essence and cascading archwood logs. And then obviously the source relay we've made before. So I need some cascading archwood and then a water essence. That's everything we need for the fluid containment jar. And then we'll make a source condenser. And what these guys do is they will condense source below them into source, uh, liquid source. So if you tried bucketing here, I'll just show you. If I grab a bucket and I try pulling source out of here, I get source bucket. Now you may think, oh yeah, that's exactly what I need. No, it is not. What you need to do is place the source condenser on top. I'll throw the source back in here so we don't actually use it. And this, anytime there's a jar of source below it, it will produce a bucket of source here. Am I seriously? Oh, I'm out of coal. I'm just out of coal. One second. So like I was saying, if you place a source condenser over top of a source jar, it will condense any source that's in it into liquefied source. And this is what you need to actually make fuel. So that is different from, here I'll show you, liquefied source and source bucket. They have two different uses. And well, we don't want source buckets, we want the liquefied source. And this guy here is used in conjunction with, I believe, biodiesel? Yeah, it's in conjunction with biodiesel from, in a fluid mixer, it requires four bars of pressure and it's just liquefied source in biodiesel. And eventually you can make this in the advanced mixer. 
and also get fuel from the fuel refinery we once you have oil. However, those are things we do not have at the moment. So what you'll do is you'll grab a mixer. Do I have one? No, I don't. Grab myself a fluid mixer and I will go down here and I'll connect it to where I do have temporary pressure. Yeah, right here is fine. It's not like I'm going to use this as in a means ever again. Like I'm never going to actually use this, I'm going to be honest, because, well, you get three buckets of fuel from the quest once you make the rocket. And if I'm using my warp scrolls, as I showed you, I'm never actually going to travel through space using no, like, sorry. And then we'll throw seven buckets of biodiesel to match our seven buckets of source. And this guy should make fuel and it'll make 50 at the time. Wow, that is slow. So we'll come back to this once it's actually done. So we don't actually have to wait on that 50 millibucket every process to work. Oh, we do have a mimic here. What did we get? Steadfast spikes. I believe that produces knockback. Yeah, it grants immunity to knockback. We don't actually need that. However, like I was saying, you don't need to wait for that fuel to finish as you do get three buckets of fuel for completing the launch pad quest here. So once you finish that and you click this check mark here, you'll get three buckets of fuel. Now that is technically so you can return because each trip in the spaceship requires three buckets of fuel no matter what rocket size you're using. So it requires three buckets of fuel to get from Earth to Venus. It requires three buckets of fuel to get to Earth to orbit. However, which way you say it, it always requires three bucks of fuel. This is in the quest is meant to give you a way back. So once you bring your launch pad or you bring a second launch pad with you, I guess, and it gives you three bucks of fuel, that is how you're supposed to get back off the moon. However, I'm going to be using warp scrolls, so I'll never actually have to use a rocket to get back. However, I do want to salvage my rocket and not let it burn up and explode once I land on the moon because we will need to, to get our space locked back. Speaking of space wing blocks, these guys are finally cooking up and it should be done eventually. <laughs> it has quite a bit more to go. It has like two and a half stacks still left. However, after these two and a half stacks finish, I should be good. These are, oh, these ones are three out of 12. I do want those to go first. And then the nine out of 12 will finish later. Awesome. So we'll come back to this once it's all done and we'll build each one of our machines and we'll get our rocket up and crafted. Our space plating should be done. I can remove the space plating extra we have there and we have everything we need. So I'll throw the space plating blocks in here. I'll grab my schematic out and the first thing we'll do is make the rocket fin and I'll go ahead and place this down directly in the middle. So if I do like this right in the middle, perfect. And throw this in here, click check and play. That'll make this one. And I'll grab out my space material or sorry, my space plating, which I already have. And I should be able to just chuck it in there Ready. And then as soon as it finishes crafting, it'll accept it. Oh no, I have to throw it in. Interesting. Is that not centered? I mean, that's centered, right? No, it's definitely centered. Why don't you want to craft? Hmm, that is bizarre. Okay, that was bizarre. I went ahead and replaced all of our projector fields and it decided to work, weirdly enough. Okay, that was bizarre. I don't think you'll need to do that. I'm just not going to chuck the space plating item in there in the future, just so it doesn't get confused. However, now that this is empty, we can make the next one, which is the rocket nose cone. Schematic not positioned. Oh yeah, that is true. I should position the schematic itself. So we'll come back to the center, place it down, throw it in there, click play. Oh, I have another loopy. I should grab this stuff from it just because the ultimate tier installers are so good. However, now that I have walls up, the item shouldn't disappear. I'm just going to keep an eye on him. Keep a coy little look on him. And I, if I throw that in there, okay, it does work. Oh, wait a minute. That is not right. What just happened? Hmm. You saw that animation, right? <laughs> that was definitely not what was supposed to happen. Did those get crafted, I wonder? Doesn't look like it. If I throw that back down and throw the item in? Okay. There's no animation. I think the animation is just lagged out. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Maybe it doesn't like the schematic cannon, but it didn't duplicate them, so that's good. Not a bug I have to report. I think it's just an animation glitch if you're using the schematic cannon. So that's unfortunate. But if it seems, it seems like I could just break it and place it down again. So that's fine. And I do need two steel tanks. So we have to make this next recipe twice. So rocket steel tank. And once again, we'll place it in the middle. Just much easier to do it in the middle like this. And we'll make two of these guys. 
Okay, same thing we did before. I'm just gonna break one of the space plating blocks, place it back down, throw a space plating in, and then it does craft. Yeah, so it just doesn't like the schematic cannon. So if you're having the same bug as I was, just break one of the space plating blocks or any of the blocks for that matter, place it back down, and then throw your space plating in it. And we'll do the exact same schematic again. So we'll go down to engine, let it build the exact same one again. That is not the right thing. What did I just build? What did I just, huh? Oh, I made the engine. I see. Okay. So I need to make another steel tank and before I try to make something else. But yeah, I need one more steel tank after this. This engine here should work. Hopefully that didn't place in the wrong direction. And I should be able to just once again, break one of the space plane blocks, place it back down and throw a space plate in there. Perfect. And then last but not least, we'll make one more steel tank this time. Where is it? Yes, we'll need the tank. So apparently I did not make enough dynamic tanks earlier. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how I messed that up. Like I did check the material list, but I I don't know. I just, I guess I forgot. So I just made 56 more real quick and this should complete. <laughs> also, I clearly made too many space plane blocks. Well, not too many, but my math was definitely off because this will be what? Five too many, I believe. Maybe I'm exact on my money. I'm not entirely sure. How far off was I? Two, three. Oh, wow. I made the exact amount of space plane blocks. Wow. My math wasn't off, but my brain is apparently because I do need to remove one of these blocks, place it back down and throw the space plate and bin there. But now I can confidently say we have everything to make our rocket ship so that we can go to the moon. Wow. It feels like it's been forever before I can actually get here, but we're almost there. Finally, where's the item? Hello? Excuse me. Can you give me my... Oh no, it gave me my steel tank. It's because I already had one of them. It's stacked. I was waiting for something to appear in my hot bar. However, I all I need is two engineering blocks and some steel blocks. So if I grab some steel, grab four steel blocks, come back over here and grab my engineering blocks, grab two of those and throw it all in here. Oh, that is not how that works. I can just grab it, go in here, shift right click it in, and we got our rocket. Look at us, we're mighty just holding the rocket above our head, classic. And I can go ahead and just place that down on our launch pad. And if you shift right click on this thing, you can see the fuel tank in here. So you can claim the fuel, like I said, from the Ad Astra quest down here. You can just claim the checkbox and grab three buckets of fuel, come in here and just throw all them in. There's also eight storage, like storage slots inside your rocket. So you can use those to get to space as well. Oh, sorry, you can use those to bring items to space or to your say, space orbit, to your space station, whatever you'd like. However, I think we're about ready to hop in this bad boy and launch ourselves into space. So we right click in it. We have oxygen. We have our fuel. We, like I said, we have plenty of oxygen loaded up. We can start our journey into the stars. So load that countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.